What's up, everybody? What's going on? Hey, Mr. Travis. All right. Well, this is um this one is to go over the uh, Lake McIntosh event uh, sponsored by Faircloth Chimney. Um, Brad and Justin supported this one really big. They had uh, they had some challenges out there that we didn't meet. They wanted uh, Brad wanted to see some twenty three inch fish, and he was going to pay for the next entry for anyone who caught one. But sadly, nobody got one to the boat. I think a few people had them on, but didn't get them on a board. So, um, and a big thank you to, uh, the logger house, logger house at, uh, Red Oak. That was an awesome meetup with them and they treated us, uh, really good, which was cool. Uh, very hospitable and, you know, we'll definitely work with them again next year. Hopefully uh, a little bit bigger. <clears throat> um, the get outdoors prize, which I believe was a, it was a PFD. If I'm correct. Um, that went to Jeremy Way. Drew that name out. So Jeremy Way, congratulations. Go see Get Outdoors. You get a, up in Greensboro. Pick up your prize and uh, buy some stuff while you're there. Support Will. He's he's done awesome things for Carolina kayak anglers for years, and uh, we want to keep them keep them happy. Um, and the next event is going to be Jordan Lake, and at the at that event, there'll be a um, double dip opportunity for the native No Limit Big Bass Tournament. I think that's what it's called. It's like $100 per person. Um, really cool event. And Jordan Lake is on the uh, approved lakes, so you might want to check that out. And that uh, the winner of Jordan will be getting this beast. Mr. Denny put together. Really nice, uh, seriously built trophy. Always overbuilt when it's done by Denny, and it's uh, these things are awesome. They're uh, powder coated, and is one for first, second, and third. So, uh, and this weekend, if any of you guys are looking for a place to fish, the Yatkin Chain is having. Uh, it's going to be swarmed by Queen City guys and. Uh, yeah, Vinny wants to see a bunch of us there too. So if you guys want to fish, it's the whole Yadkin chain. Pick any lake you want. Um, QC rules, obviously. But um, you know, if you're into that, go uh, go hit them up. It's going to be the perfect weekend for um, for the Yadkin chains, and and that's usually when I do really well at High Rock. So I'm going to try to make that one if I can. But if I can't, then uh, good luck to everybody fishing that one. And um, with all that said, let's bring on the winner from the uh, Lake McIntosh event, Mr. Jeremy Hicks. What's up, man? What's up, dude? How y'all? Good. Good. So how you doing? I mean, I'm doing good. Uh, nice. A little work, a little fishing. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh... See, this is your first win with CKA, which got you on the, um, uh, what's the name of that page? I forget the name of the page. Henry will yell at me. <laughs> He's not on here yet. He'll, he'll post up in a minute and yell at me. But the <laughs> champions, the, the Hall of Champions, that's the page. So uh, you got your name up on that. So awesome. uh, congratulations there, man. Awesome, man. That's, it's a tough field. Bless yeah, it is. it is. It is. To win one of these events, you've done something and uh I'll put up our guys against anybody. I think we got some of the toughest anglers in the state. So, For sure. you know, these guys, these guys know their stuff. So it's uh, it's always an accomplishment. Sure. But uh, so, why don't you uh, let these guys know who Jeremy Hicks is? How long you've been kayak fishing and competing? And all right, well, for those that don't know, I'm Jeremy Hicks. Um, I'm from the around the Rocky Mount Wilson area, uh, east of Raleigh. Um, been tournament fishing probably 20 plus years. Um, I've mostly fished out of boats uh, for about the past four, maybe five years. I've been kayak fishing, uh, fishing with CKA for three or four years. Um, that's work would allow, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. I do it when I can, yeah. Yeah, I see that you you do well in the monthlies. I've seen you got like about what five titles there. You've won, yeah, I got uh, got quite a few of them. Um, just blessed to be able to have a job where i have the time to go and you know have some stuff that's close by 
yeah. and I had to travel. Most of CKA stuff, you know, is a couple hours from where we are, where I am. So it's uh, it's it's good to be able to fish a little monthly deal and be local, mm-hmm. be close to home. Nice, nice. So where are you from? At Rocky Mount. Rocky Mount. Okay. Yep. Good deal. Do you fish yep. the Buckhorn Reservoir at all? I fish Buckhorn. I live um right at the Tar River Reservoir, which is right outside of Rocky Mount. Rocky Mount Reservoir. I live mm-hmm. uh about three miles from there, so I fish there a lot. Fish. I'm about 15 minutes from Buckhorn, uh, about 40 minutes from Gaston Lake. So that's where I kind of fish kayak a lot. And I grew up fishing down the east uh, off the Chowan, the Roanoke River, Albemarle Sound. That's where I kind of done all my tournament fishing. Um, with some lakes, you know, of course, in the central part of the state. But most mm-hmm. of our stuff is down east in the rivers. Nice, nice. Uh, so let's uh, about the event. So before you went to practice, what were you uh, expecting, and for as far as practice went? Well, before I got to go practice, uh, I was expecting Justin and Rick to blow it out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, we all were. <laughs> um, I actually had to work that Thursday night, so I got off work and uh, I went up there Friday morning and got the fish till I don't know twelve o'clock or so, and uh, I set the hook on a few. And I knew the pattern was there, um, and I knew it was going to take – somebody was going to catch them big. I didn't realize it was going to be quite as what it was. Um, I was kind of surprised, but uh, I was expecting for it to be well over 100 inches, and I was expecting a few of them to be, honestly. I was expecting two or three to be over 100, the way everybody had talked it. And I don't have a lot of experience in Macintosh. Um, you know, with CKA, it was the first time I'd ever fished it, you know, a couple of years back, and – so it's been kind of, it's kind of got the best of me every time up until I really, I just got blessed and lucky this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <for sure. laughs> what, did, what did you find in practice then? Um, you... I found, we actually went to the boat side and um, found some deeper, uh, deeper rock and deeper wood. And um, I tried fishing shallow and it just, it wasn't working for me. So I mm-hmm. went out, you know, in that four to six, seven, eight foot of water. And trying to get those ones that were still staged out, ready to come in, but hadn't quite committed yet with the temperatures jacking all up, you know, being all yeah. over the place. And uh, I said, I found a couple of few, few spots on the boating side that I was pretty confident that I could catch some catch some fish. And uh, so I went back to the non-boating side and just hit a few spots. And I was like, well, I'm on a pattern. I know what I'm going to do. Uh, and we'll just see what tomorrow plays. Normally, if you have a good pre-fish, it doesn't really transpire to the tournament so well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's usually it's a bad sign most of the time. Yeah, Plus so. the uh, cold fronts coming in and everything else that changes yeah, sure. the door. I figure if I keep sitting out here trying to find more spots, I'm going to keep catching fish. So I just uh, I come on back to Rocky Mountain, regrouped, and got ready for Saturday morning. Nice. So how many days did you end up pre-fishing? I fished two total. I fished one early. And the water was all out of whack then, and then I fished that Friday before the before the mm-hmm. tournament, nice. which was pretty much the same pattern that I've been fishing for the past, I don't know, two or three weeks. It's just what I, I feel like last year and the year four, I kind of, I tried to fish ways that, you know, I wasn't really confident in. I guess you would say trying to make things happen that you know you see and hear and. I was like, nah, forget all that. Let's just go back to the roots, and uh, right. so that's what I did and just stuck with it and it worked out nice nice so how the the tournament day itself uh did you have uh did everything just go perfectly or did you was it a struggle or what it go it was well i went first of all i spoke to justin as we were blasting off and i cut across the lake went to the boating side and my first spot i went to like my third cast i caught my first 20 inch and i was like well the size is definitely bigger than i thought it was going to be but the fish are where they were yesterday so I was like, this is going to be a good day. Um, I'll be able to compete with the best of them. So I thought. And uh, <laughs> so I got that first one submitted, and uh, which I didn't look at the leaderboard anymore for, for a while. And my next four or five spots, it was like empty. I was like, well, that pattern went to crap real quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Boat started swarming in, and uh, it was just kind of – I was all over the place. You know, I caught one good one and I'm like, you know, I'm trying to make something happen over there. And cause I know a lot of guys that were on the, on the kayak only side. And I was trying to stay away from that long as I could. And, uh, 
So I fished four or five spots, man. It's probably a couple, two or three hours. I didn't get another bite. And I'm like, well, this really is going downhill, and I got to regroup. So uh, I said, I'm going back to the other side, to the other bridge. And uh, the first spot I went to, I caught one that was 17-something. And on the same style stuff, just a little bit shallower, but on the same principle of what I caught them on the other side, just throwing a, a jackhammer up around some rock and wood. Um, it was more bank oriented than it was depth i guess you would say if the bank looked right had the right stuff on the bank i guess it transpired out into the water so it was just it was right yeah. um, caught a couple 17s and then um i caught like a 12 inch one or something for my fourth fish and and i was going on back up the lake and i was like well it's it's gonna be what it's gonna be the size should have shrunk <laughs> and uh, i was like that's that's par for the course i guess you would say and uh old rick Rowland was up there fishing i went by him and he had a few and i was like well he's gonna be one to beat and i seen him catch a good one and i was like well that's gonna be that and went right around him a couple hundred yards and caught one another 20 inch one made my fifth fish and i was like well i ain't putting this jackhammer down the rest of the day and it's gonna be what it's gonna be so that's pretty much what i did i went on toward the back and from then on it was it was call your shots back there. Um, I pulled up on a spot and I was like, I'm gonna catch one here and it would be a 20 inch one. I could never get any big ones. And people, it's kind of funny. You catch a bunch of twenties and say you can't get a big one, but <laughs> they were all the same size, 20 and three quarter to 20. Um, yeah, yeah. but I, I ended up catching nine over 20 inches, um, yeah. total. So I probably caught 15 or 16 fish total and nine over 20. And, uh, when, when I went to the back and it was just, I'd go across the lake and the bank would look good, you know, three, four, five hundred yards away, and I'd go straight to it and throw out there and I'd catch a twenty. It was one of those times where it just was meant to be. You know, everywhere yeah. you go back there, it was just it was a fish, and, and I was hoping for that big one. And then I kept looking at the board then, and I seen I seen somebody was creeping on up in there. Jacob and Rick, you know, I know they were having some good times, just waiting on the, just one fish. You know, and it would have been a different ball game, but that's pretty much it, man. It was, uh, it was pretty, it was fun after that. It was, I was fishing near, uh, uh, Rick and I caught one, put me over a hundred inches and I hollered. He heard me holler. He said, I knew I was in trouble when I heard a woohoo across the lake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. All right. <laughs> uh, so that's the first in person term I've ever had over a hundred inches. So I was, I was kind of pumped when I finally got, finally got that. Nice, nice. Yeah, you got. Uh, yeah, you're only an inch and a quarter over the second place guy, so it was. It got pretty tight. <laughs> yeah, it, it was, and I looked at his fish, and I was like, "Well, if he catches one more good one, this it's only then Rick was the same way. If he'd have caught, you know, a twenty inch one, it, they would all been so close. It would it would have been all been right there. So I'm glad yeah. they didn't. I'm glad they didn't catch him. I'm glad <laughs> I did, but. <laughs> yeah, for sure. As I saw him, I think I put up a fish at, uh, I don't know, 8 o'clock or something. It was pretty early. And uh, I usually don't look at the leaderboard, but I was curious because I was not having the morning I wanted. So I said, how are they doing? I looked and I see him in the 90s already. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> said, All right. It was know. it was kind of funny. I, I caught a 18 and a half on Friday at one spot toward the very, very back of up under there. I don't even know what it's called on that end, but. I'm as far as you can go with deep water. And I caught mm -hmm. one 18 and a half. And then, so I went to that same spot, you know, it was after lunch. And I caught the 20 and three quarter there on the same exact spot, same cast. What I fished on around. And um, I went like almost 18 miles total that day. So I did, it wasn't a lot of just fishing stretches. It was hit a spot and put it on 10 and mosey on. And, uh, but I went back to that same spot and caught a 20 inch one on the exact same spot. So I said, when you can do that, it's it's your day. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Win, lose, or draw, it's your day. So I was, <laughs> I was, I was eating it up. Uh, you got yeah. to take. You're blessed to get those options, to get those chances with with this group of guys. And oh yeah, when the luck falls and the stars align, I'm gonna I'm gonna ride that. I'm gonna ride it. <laughs> yes, sir. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, let's see what else. What else can we go over here? So what do you fish out of? 
I got a O Town uh, Autopilot 136. Nice. Yeah, man. That them Dakotas, uh, I maxed them out. <laughs> <laughs> I've yeah. gone uh, 19 miles on one charge on that 100 amp hour, and I was right there up under. I had told Rick when I was at the back, I said, I'm going to start heading on back because. I probably maxed this hundred amp hour out and I don't really want to paddle this barge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those are a bit heavy to be uh, trying to paddle around for sure. It is that, but I say, I, it's kind of funny. You, you struggle somewhere so much and then it just falls into place. You could have left electronics at home that on that day. And it, I didn't even really look, didn't even use what I had. It's just, if it looked right, you know, it was just, yeah stars aligned i guess you would say and just blessed to be that way yeah i kept trying the shallow thing it didn't work for me but uh i got too early and i just stuck with that but then i kept seeing like i go over like a point on my way to another spot and i just see like it looked like a pile of fish and i'm just like now nah, i'm gonna stay shallow <laughs> it was kind of <laughs> funny. Like 19 something up shallow and i missed one right before it so it's like uh i was like that i know they're good size on the bank so i don't want to leave yeah so, but it ended up killing me i told keith at the, at the, at the way in i was like you know i got those five fish then i found myself in the back of a pocket i'm like what the heck am i doing back here i ain't caught no fish in the back of no pocket get, get, <laughs> get, but get out of here you know it's just just fishing it and then it uh but most of mine were just into the little pockets you know it's a lot of little small points out there on that side and mm -hmm. they won't own the points they were you toward the spawning areas, but they were hung up on something, whether it had been a lot of wood or that you know, place has got a lot of rock that you really can't see, um, especially toward the back of it. And wood and rock, I mean, that was the deal. And it was just slow, slow rolling. And you could be up there shallow and it wouldn't be anything, but you let that jackhammer get on down and do its work in that five or six foot of water. And it was, they were eating it, they were choking it. So, wow. Crazy. Yeah, I tried that too. I was throwing that a little bit. I just couldn't get bit. What color uh, jacket were you throwing? It's uh like a green pumpkin, mm -hmm. um, with a uh, green pumpkin black um razor, a trailer on it. It's kind of like a Zayco, or something mm -hmm. we call a Sprat, um, but it's a little, little, uh, little, little green pumpkin trailer on it, and it was just hitting the bottom, and it wasn't necessarily making contact the whole time. But once I got it down there, you know, just kind of reeled it on up a little bit and. It went down there long, and they were they were there. It's like they were in the bottom, you know, a couple foot off the bottom. I'm sure they were on the bottom, but the bait being pretty close, it was uh, it was it was pretty pretty spot on, I guess you would say. Nice, nice, that worked out. It did. Deal. We got the second place guy here too, so I'm gonna bring him on in, Mr. Uh, Jacob Miles. What's up, man? What's going on? What's What's happening? Happening? So what's uh inch and a quarter? You were up there early, right? I believe you were in first like real early in the morning, right? Yeah, uh, but I think about all day I was in first until last what forty minutes or so. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so uh, yeah, why don't you uh, why don't you let these guys know who you are? I'm sure most people already do because you've been around a lot longer than I have. So, um, so I'm Jacob Miles. I uh, started. Uh started kayak fishing like right after high school. Um, uh, I'd got just a cheap sit in Walmart kayak and fished out of it a little bit. And then I sold it and then a couple years went by and I decided to get back into it. And then I slowly upgraded to some more fishing style kayaks and then got into the tournament scene around 2015, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then it's just been in high gear since then. Nice. I see him catching some good ones out of a boat too lately, huh? Yeah, just uh, recently, uh, I think in the last couple of years, I got I got a boat right before our daughter was born. So, um, uh, last year I started fishing a few more tournaments out of it, and just kind of flip flop between that and the kayak. Nice. So, how'd your uh, pre fish go before? Did you have a chance to, or you just? Uh, yeah, so I pre-fished um, out of my boat a week before the tournament uh, on a Friday. I went over there just to uh, actually just to mess around. I wasn't even really pre-fishing that day, but I found some fish on the uh, the boat side way up the creek and uh, on something totally different than what I caught them on tournament day. 
And then I went and pre-fished again the Friday before the tournament. And uh, all day I had two bites until like the last hour I, that I was there. I finally uh, connected with a few fish and figured out what I needed to do. And, uh, so I had uh, caught one. Well, actually, I hooked one twice that acted like it was on a bed. I couldn't really see if it was on a bed because the, the water was so muddy. But uh, I made my mind up. That's where I was going to start. And it was about two miles from the boat ramp. And um, I actually didn't start there, tournament day. Um, I hate everybody seeing where I started because it was a, it's kind of a little honey hole. I kind of sneak back in there about midday just to see if I can't get a few bites. But I'd uh, – laying in bed the night before I was talking to my wife and said, uh, you know what? I think I'm just going to go in that spot first because I've been in there before and caught like 17, 18 pounds in 45 minutes. And I've never ever started there in a tournament. So I might as well start there. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> why not load up right off the bat and then you can just go hunt for big ones. Yeah. Nice. So, I'd, uh, so what were you fishing with? How what was it? Was it deep, shallow? Shallows, close to the bank that could get it. Um, the wacky worm, throwing a wacky worm about every two foot down the bank lines. And um, anytime I could get to something like a stick, lay down, rock, anything like that, I'd make four or five casts at it. And um, I think my biggest one, I actually cast it in the same spot seven or eight times before it actually bit. I wasn't mm -hmm. looking at beds or anything. I was just picking, picking apart the banks. Gotcha, gotcha. So, uh, when was your last fish that you caught? What time was that? Uh, my last fish that I my last upgrade, I think, was between one and one thirty, somewhere around that mark. I can't remember. Um, okay. I can't. I actually, I did catch a couple of smaller fish after that, but uh, my last upgrade was about one thirty. Got you. Okay. And Jeremy, you said it was like one o'clock or so on you. Yeah, I, I caught a couple of twenties back to back, and mm -hmm. I didn't even submit them at that point in time. I it was about ten minutes before I actually got to a spot where I could submit them because I was, I was in the moment, I guess you would say. <laughs> Maybe, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to be the one to hold the fish, and then I got the I caught one more small, it wouldn't have helped me, and I let me get to put these fish on the board. I. I can't stand it. Leave my luck, my phone fall in the water or something crazy happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've done that, unfortunately. Not in a tournament, thank goodness, but yeah. And it happened to me down at uh, Cat Up, falling mm. overboard. So. <laughs> wow. All right. So you guys uh, you guys fishing on Jordan in a couple of weeks? Plan to. Yeah, I am. Nice. And what do you think that's going to be like? It's gonna be a bunch of them over 100 inches. It should be if, it, if the rain don't if the rain don't get it. It should be a bunch of them. Yeah, it sh it should be pretty good. I think. I know uh, we fished Falls this past weekend, and it it wasn't as far along as Macintosh. I don't think. Really. As far as bedding goes. That's where you won that one, did uh, the CCK? Yeah, right? I got lucky enough and won it. <laughs> nice. I couldn't make up my mind whether I wanted to go or not, and I saw the weather, and I was like, I don't want to do a cold front again. I'm done with these yeah. cold fronts. I'm staying home. So, seems like they, they come along every weekend. Yeah, yeah, it's the time perfectly to screw our weekends up, which is or make them better for some people. Some people like the cold fronts. I don't get it, but they never seem to work for me. <laughs> but uh, uh, let's see what else we get going on. Yeah, I told him at, we got ready to launch for the tournament last Saturday. I was like, "Let's do a repeat." Well, he done his part, but I didn't. I didn't prepare <laughs> my part. <laughs> you fished that one. Where'd you end up on that one? I think I got eight, um, mm -hmm. like eighty-three. We were all right there with eighty-three. I lost a couple of really giants right at the boat. They were just same pattern. I was fished at Macintosh. Uh, they just won't eat it as good. And I think the size fish were bigger and they just won't eating it all the way so they were actually holding on to the bait and wanting a good hook set and then they go to trying to play in the olympics and they were coming off so i lost three of them right at the boat so ouch yeah it hurt i was trying to get the net for one it was i don't know seven 
poundish. It was on out there, and uh, it jumped three times. So I was trying to get net unhooked and come <laughs> off. It was over with after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. That's brutal. Yeah, <laughs> it falls didn't treat me good this year yet, but I'm gonna I'll get back out there one of these days. I'm gonna kick it, but I've been to Jordan just once so far. Only went on Sunday. Uh, didn't really figure too much out. It seems like they're in the same kind of deal where there's some hanging off on points waiting and then a lot more that you know they were pretty much up in the dirt. Yeah, I fished there one time here recently and caught a couple good ones, but it's gonna change so much, especially with these eighty degree days and it staying warm at night, it's gonna it's gonna put them in overdrive before the end of the month. They should be right. for sure. Yeah, they should be they should be full tilt, I would think, by then. As long as, you know, we had that one a couple of years ago, I forget which year it was, probably 2018 maybe. Um, the night before, we got like three inches of rain in like in a half hour or something. It just blew the whole lake out. It was a mess. <laughs> but, so I'm praying that doesn't happen again. Hopefully we get the, you know, get the lake when everything's perfect. Yeah, I hope we get it where the stars align. That way, I mean, show that place out, especially with the kayaks. I mean, you know, boats yeah. go there and get those big bags, but you don't see a lot of kayaks go there and really, really get them good. But it would be nice to get get a bunch of hundred inch bags. You know, that Heck says yeah. a lot. Especially if people are fishing that big bass, uh, no limit the deal too. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> out of nice that. To, you have a nice payday right there, boy. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Catch five giants, you earn that in the CKA deal. You you got a you got a payday yep. for sure. So I think the only other lake that I would consider a challenge to Jordan would be the Sandy Cooper that they have on that list. So uh, and maybe the High Rock and the Stanley County chain might might be do well too. But I would think uh, I would think Jordan and Stanley are going to put up the numbers. Yeah, I say Baden or Bad, never how you want to say it. that. That has the potential to be. To be mm. good, also, I've I fished a few uh, BFLs there out of a bass boat, and there's been some really big bags weighed into that place. It's kind of a hidden gem. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to make it not hidden. I mean, <laughs> Chad and I were trying to we're trying to blow that place up. So, uh, I mean, it's up to two thousand dollars if you catch your biggest fish in the monthly right now out of that t Baden artillery down through that chain. So. Uh, and by the time we get there, it could be twenty five hundred dollars for that one fish. We, so, we have there three hours from there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm like two and a half hours from there myself, so it's uh, been hard to get there. But I'm actually going to meet up with Chad soon down there, and uh, you know we're going to have a day out there. So hopefully, I can load up on some fish. <laughs> so uh, I think that's about all I got. You guys got any sponsors or anything else you guys want to shout out? Man, just uh, Old Town Kayaks, man. They're awesome. They get the job done. Real stable. Uh, Razor Custom Tackle. Check them out. Man, they have some stand-up banging buzz baits. Uh, they have a little bit of everything, but they're bad buzz baits and those sprats. They have their own, like, uh, chatter bait. It's just a uh, small business, and they're good, good baits. And uh, those casting rods, man, just, they're hard to beat. Yeah, they're good rods. How about you, Jacob? Um, just a couple. I uh, like to shout out New Canoe. Uh, I've been fishing out of their boats for um, five years now, I think, and uh, no issues out of any of the ones I've had. Um, uh, very easy to set up for motors, uh, transom or uh, bow mount. Um, now we can add pedals and motor at the same time, so that's that's a plus in my eyes. Um, and I also like to shout out uh, Denali Rods. I've been using their rods for quite a few years now and um, grown to really love them. Nice. Good deal. And the, big, and the biggest one of all is y'all guys behind the scenes. Eric, you do an yeah. awesome, job, awesome job of CKA. Um, just thank you for all you do. And I know the anglers don't see all the ghosts on in and out throughout the year, but I mean, we, uh, we greatly appreciate all that y'all do, everybody that's involved. Sure, and all the anglers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, man. I appreciate everyone showing out, and hopefully, we can uh, get a little, get up over 60, 70 on uh, for Jordan. Is it? I think that'd be the that's going to be an awesome event. So, and the one in May as well. So, we should be getting people from out of state coming down for that one. So, it should be interesting. 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, it should be a good time. All right, guys. We'll uh, talk to you later, and we'll see you at Jordan. All right, All right dude. Right. We'll see you around. All right. Bye.